Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about the tropics ramping up as multiple storms look to develop in the coming days. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Let's expand the view and take a look uh, at the Atlantic. You can definitely see it's been pretty quiet uh, on the Atlantic side, severe clear in the North Atlantic right now. The last storm we had, Tropical Storm Elsa, that made landfall in Florida, but that was back on July the 6th, and there really hasn't been anything happening uh, since then on the Atlantic side, but things are gonna be start ramping up uh, in a big way. You can notice these tropical waves that are coming off the coast of Africa. One of these just uh, east of the Lesser Antilles, uh, is going to be getting its act together as well as another uh, formidable tropical wave that's coming off the coast that's also going into a, a pretty good uh, conducive environment as these as these will continue to move across uh, west uh, northwest so let's take a look at all the dynamics and what uh, the atmosphere they're going to be running into uh, if we take a look at the latest uh, national hurricane center They've got uh, Invest 91 and then Invest 92L. So let's start off this feature right here, uh, east of the Lesser Antilles. Uh, it's got a, a, a tropical wave. It's uh, eastbound of the Lesser Antilles. It's going into a, like a marginal conducive environment, but slow development is expected as we go into uh, early next week, as this continues moving towards uh, the Lesser Antilles. But we also have a very active uh, tropical wave that's coming off the coast of Africa right now, it's got a 70% chance of forming into a tropical storm. This is going in also and in going into a pretty good uh, conducive environment and the National Hurricane Center expects this to be a, a, a tropical depression is likely to form by late Saturday uh, going into Sunday as this continues uh, moving across west, west, uh, west northwest. So let's take a look at some of the dynamics and how this is all going to play out. The Japanese model updated this updated this morning. It updates every Thursday. And we've been kind of highlighting that August 10th time frame to really zoom in and zone in on the Atlantic side as I felt like things were going to start to really turn around. And here's the latest update. Man, it's pretty bullish, guys. Look at all the blue that's going to be over the associated with the, uh, on the Atlantic and the Caribbean as well as uh, the Gulf of Mexico. The blue is your upward rising motion air. So it, as these storms come across, it's got a lot more conducive environment. As the thunderstorms start to rise, they will they will allow to continue to rise and form uh, you know bigger thunderstorms and create that maybe low level swirl at the uh, at, at the surface would create uh, that uh, potential tropical depression then a tropical just stor storm. You can definitely see out here in the on, on the Pacific side where it's been very active for July. Now we have all that sinking air pushing uh, pushing in that neck of the woods. So eventually that's going to put a squash the systems on the Pacific side and all that's going to transfer over onto the Atlantic side. So this is day three through nine over the next uh, week. Very conducive. Even beyond that, from the 10 to 16 time frame, again, a lot of blues showing up on the Atlantic side. And then even the 17 to 30 day time frame, that's also, yes, a lot of blues showing up on the Atlantic side. So I do feel things are going to be st starting to ramp up in a big way uh, as we go into the next uh, several days and really for the rest of the rest of August uh, for the tropics. So let's take a look at where these storms would likely go in the month of August. Here's the likely pass. If they do form off in the main development region, some of them have a tendency uh, to kind of lift up and go out to sea. Some of them continue that west northwest track, what they're doing now, and that would put it in, in and around close to Florida. If it continues more westerly track, uh, that would keep it further south in the Caribbean and put it over the Caribbean and probably maybe maybe would likely enter the Gulf of Mexico. So all of these three tracks are likely going forward and what these things have, what they're going to be going up against as they move further across in west and northwest bound is your shear. Here's your shear parameters. 
for today, August the 5th, and look at the green here. That is your more favorable environment for development, and the red is your more likely your unfavorable environment. And here's where the storms are right now. It's not in a very favorable environment, but that as this continues west-northwest, it does go into a little bit more favorable environment with less shear happening. It actually continues if it does keep going west-northwest in that favorable environment all the way to the island of Jamaica too. So it's it's pretty clear in the road ahead for these potential storms as they would continue west-northwest. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the uh, ensemble member guidance from the, the latest uh, uh, European model as well as the GFS model ensembles. This is basically all members of the, of the European uh, models. This is Invest 91 and you can definitely see it's got all members. Some of them actually, yes, take it out to sea, but most of them continue that course west northwest and some of them actually continue to push it more westbound. Uh, the GFS model kind of has the same thing, continued west, northwest over the next uh, four, five, six days. So that puts it in and around closer to the Lesser Antilles. That is Invest uh, 91L. That's the one closer to the Lesser Antilles right now. Here's the one further away towards the African coast. That kind of has the same thing. You can definitely see a lot of the members continue pushing off west, westbound. Some of them, yes, do push it out to sea. But most of them continue on that co course uh, west north west you know northwest bound, and that's what it's forecasted to do you know over the next uh, five days. So let's take a look at the the latest guidance. Here's the 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 uh, latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center. They actually just updated this yesterday. Uh, average storms on a yearly basis now is 14 named storms. When they originally came out with their prediction. They forecasted 13 to 20 storms. They have since upgraded that as of yesterday. Now we're looking at 15 to 21 storms, seven to 10 hurricanes, and three to five major. Uh, so actually I made my first hurricane uh, forecast back way back in April now. And uh, I was calling for 18 to 22 storms back then. And I don't really gonna be changing that. And I don't, I don't see a need to be changing that. And that still looks like that's gonna be coming to uh, fruition. So yes, things still look to be very active and continue to remain active, especially as we go into uh, deeper into the hurricane season and peak season. And then the MJO, which is your, your Matt and Julie oscillation, it's going into a very upward rising enhanced phase of the MJO. Right now, you can definitely see this is the red here. Uh, this is, you know, August 5th time frame that we're looking at, and, and this will go southbound, and it looks like it's going to be going to, to more active phase one, and then especially the most bullish phase is uh, active phase two by the time, yeah, we get into that August 10th, 12th, 14th time frame. So this is really why I kind of depicted and kind of highlighted that August 10th time frame, because I knew that MJO was probably going to be in phase two, phase one, phase two by then. And that is your more conducive type of uh, development. But look, it stays in that active phase really for the rest of August. So I do feel things are going to be starting to ramp up uh, in a big way. So let's take a look at the sea surface temperature. And here's the main development region out here. It would uh, These waters out here have been cool. These have warmed a little bit as of late. Uh, but as as the system go across and as they enter further into the Caribbean, it's got above average anomalies happening for much of the Caribbean. And especially if this thing can get if any storm can get into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, you know, all bets are off because it's got man, it's got plenty. Uh, I showed you the shear environment earlier. There's not much shear happening right now in the Gulf of Mexico. And there are plenty of warm temperatures as well. Elsa went through on July the 6th. So it's got a whole month here with nothing to upwell those waters. So these things are prime out here in the Gulf of Mexico. So that is definitely a concern as we go as, as we go forward. And the deep ocean water content as well. So that's also a concern. Not just are they elevated at the surface, but they're elevated underneath. And deep, warm ocean content waters have more capability produce bigger storms because they got the deeper the water that's, that's warmer the deeper it is yes it's got more more fuel to fuel those storms as you have that upward rising motion air to tap into and that would fuel and create those bigger storms unfortunately as they move across that atmosphere 
Now let's take a look at the, the, the 500 millibar guidance. We talked about the big warm up on the way for the United States, especially for the Northwest and the Northeast, but this is not a good sign for tropical development underneath because that would have caused a lot of divergence and also help steer some of these storms towards closer into uh, the United States. So it's not, all, it's not a good sign that the ridge looks to, to uh, develop over the northeastern United States as we go deeper uh, into next week. And by then, a lot of these storms would be closer, potentially, you know, into the Caribbean, closer into the United States by then. So that is definitely a little bit more concerning as as well. So let's take a look at some of the uh, some of the model guidance going forward. We look, I, I kind of highlighted the icon model because this model last year was very pretty good on uh, tropical systems and I, I kind of uh, put it out all the way till uh, out by till uh, Tuesday. So today's Thursday. So this is not that far off. We're talking four or five days from now. It's actually got two vorticities happening. This would actually be Invest 91L and this would be Invest 92L actually have rotation and this model comes to fruition. These would be two storms, tropical storms by then. This actually puts it a little bit further westbound. So that this uh, this particular Invest 91L, if this model came true, this would actually keep it further west, south of uh, the, the Dominican Republic as this would continue uh, west. But as we move forward, what is interesting, it almost looks like it actually wants to take almost like an identical path that uh, tropical storm or sometimes Hurricane Elsa took. So if you recall, this one actually went across the Caribbean and it went north of the island of Jamaica. So this actually has a lot of resemblance if this thing would have happened by next Thursday, would place the system in and around near the island of Jamaica, a lot like uh, Tropical Storm Elsa did. So that's definitely concerning. And then we also have uh, that Invest 92. Now, if this one actually came to fruition, it actually has this one actually going out to sea. So it's coming off the coast right now. So we got a lot of time uh, to watch these systems, but man, yes, th that would actually put the wind again further just off, just north of the island of Jamaica. So that's definitely something to be concerned about as we go into uh, next week that this may be take more of a southern course and keep it more westbound and that would impact a little bit you know a little bit of the dominican republic going into uh, uh puerto rico and then potentially the island of jamaica and then of course elsa continued on that bound and eventually got into the gulf of mexico so that is something we're gonna have to watch uh, from uh, invest 91l and there's your precipitation would you know yes it would keep that track more westbound uh, then rather than take it out to sea, it would keep that heavier rain making almost a beeline towards uh, going into the island, you know, island of the Jamaica. And this actually stops at 180, the, you know, hour 180. This would continue uh, moving across. This could potentially impact the Bahamas as well. So yeah, definitely something to be concerned about as we head into next week. But there's a lot of stuff we gotta be happening, not just next week, but the week after. And as we go even into, you know uh, the rest of august because i do things things are going to be starting to ramp up uh in a big way so definitely stay with me i'll keep you ahead of the storm as best i can i appreciate you guys uh, watching definitely like this video share it with your friends on uh, social media and catch me in the next video why i protect you before and after the storm